This morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Thanks be to God. like to invite the children to come forward for a moment. I want to show you my favorite picture of Palm Sunday, which is what we're celebrating today. But first, I want to tell you a little bit of the story about Palm Sunday, because we hear it every year, and it must be a really important story if we celebrate it every single year. On Palm Sunday, so there's this big festival in Jerusalem, right? The city of peace. Jerusalem meant the city of peace. And now there were two big parades on that day. When Jesus went into Jerusalem, there were actually two, two big parades. And there were two kings, two kings that were being celebrated. What? Yeah, I know. Surprising. So, I want to tell you about these two kings. One king had a huge army and stood on a big, big, big gold throne and had hundreds of horses all around him and people with big, big shiny weapons and he had big jewels all over his Fingers, not that wearing jewels is a problem, but you know, he was a little bit excessive with it. Um, so, uh, so the so this king was on his throne, and then so there's that king that they're celebrating, and he had really really powerful people all around him who had lots of land, lots of money, yeah. and. That was that one king. And they also had all sorts of fancy clothes and tables full of like really, really luxurious food. And that was that king. And they, they lived far away from the people in big castles, big, big fancy buildings made out of marble. And then there was another king. And that was that was Jesus. And Jesus just, well, here's an, this is why this is my favorite picture of Palm Sunday. Where can you, which one is Jesus? Where do you see Jesus in there? It's a, Jesus is everyone there? Do you think he looks like that? But Jesus could also... Oop, my mic sh shut off again. There we go. Hello. There we go. But Jesus could also be this person. Or maybe even that person waving out the window. Jesus could be any face in the crowd. Well, the interesting thing about Palm Sunday is... When Jesus came riding into town, he walked into town with all the people that were normally not seen, were normally invisible. He walked in with the lepers, he walked in with the women, he walked in with the children. And these were people that the other king didn't think were very powerful at all. All the people actually that the other king wanted to be made invisible. And so, that's what we have here. And so 
the one king sat on a big fancy throne and the other king was happy just being another face in the crowd. Or like a thousand faces. Which king do you think is more powerful? Jesus. The, the children on Palm Sunday thought that too. The one uh, leading the Palm Jesus. And why do you think that is? I think it's valid too and the kids on Palm Sunday that's what they thought we hear about the kids leading the parade yelling Hosanna on Palm Sunday waving their palms just like you and there were some there were definitely adults there too it was everybody together and that's what we learn about the power that Jesus <coughs> teaches us about on Palm Sunday we learn that uh, our faith tells us that the most powerful, the greatest power is the love that walks right next, right next to us. And so that's why we try to walk next to each other in everything that we do, especially people who might be left out normally. So let's, uh, you can go, there's no church school today. I'm going to tell more of the story about Palm Sunday, but you can all go back to your seats for now. You can take that up with your, your mother if you don't want to with you. So, God. <laughs> so, Palm Sunday and the lesson of Holy Week is about where we locate power and what we identify as truly powerful and what we can create together with God. And before going into all that, I think it's very interesting. Now I know we're all Protestants here and so uh, what, as far as we're concerned, the Pope is another face in the crowd and uh, I suppose that's true, and also the Pope is a significant voice in Christianity all over the world and has been for a very long time, and so it's interesting, and it might interest us, that this past week, Pope Francis, after 2,000 years of uh, hell being used as a tool of terror to scare masses of people into submission and justify the drawing of most of the boundaries, all over the world for centuries, the Pope said, hell is a state of the heart. Wow. Now, theologically for me, I, I think that's great, but it also strikes me as maybe a little bit too little too late, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but it's still interesting. And I think that in this parade of Palm Sunday, we see a visual display of the kingdom of heaven, which is also a state of the heart. And even in Judaism, the kingdom of heaven was a term used by many rabbis, referring to what the social order could or might possibly look like if rooted what society rooted in God's law would look like. And Christ came along preaching a message that God's law was this love that walks alongside us and with us. And, and so we are called to walk alongside each other, all those rendered invisible. Actually, 
Uh, this past Friday, we celebrated the Transgender Day of Visibility in a time period when uh, we have hateful people in our society saying we need to work for a society where transgenderism doesn't exist, we have to ask ourselves, who is Christ walking alongside today on Palm Sunday? And so the good news is we can, of Palm Sunday is we can live with, with and from that state of the heart that liberating love, that revolutionary love toppling over conventional worldly definitions of power, toppling over states of the heart that are antagonistic to love and inclusivity and compassion, identifying true power as solidarity with the least among us, with each other. It's not that heaven isn't a place. It's not that we can't uh, strive for eternal consciousness and life after death, but we have to remember that in the Judeo-Christian world of first century Palestine, when they were talking about the kingdom of heaven, they were talking about the renewal of the world, the renewal of the human heart right now. And Jesus was speaking about the relevance of the kingdom of, ha of heaven, more about how we keep our minds and our hearts and how we live today more than tomorrow. And this is why Jesus said, don't say here it is or there it is for the